Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about equivalent fractions. Let's start with this problem here. It says write a fraction that is equivalent to four six. So whenever you set up a fraction that you have to find its equivalence, make sure you leave yourself some room so you can multiply it by the power of one. Now, the power of one basically means that whatever number you decide to multiply as your numerator, you have to do the same as your denominator. So if we decide to multiply, and I'll pick a different color, my numerator by three, I need to do the same for my denominator. So if I have three on top, I have to have three in the bottom. This right here is our power of one. Because three out of three equals one whole. So now let's go ahead and multiply. Four times three, we get 12. Six times three, we end up get it, getting 18. So a fraction that is equivalent to four six is 12, 18. Now we can go ahead and try to do another one that's also equivalent to four six. So if I set it up just the same, but this time I decide to multiply by a different number. As long as it ends up being power of one, I'll get a different equivalent fraction. So let's say we decide to multiply our numerator by two. That means we have to multiply our denominator by two as well. So this right here is what makes it the power of one. So now four times two, we end up getting eight and six times two, we get 12. So another fraction that is also equivalent to four six is eight twelfths. Now, if you still don't believe me, you can go ahead and prove it with this image here. Right here, I have all three of these fractions listed. I have four six, 12 eighteenths, and eight twelfths, and you can see the same amount or the same value is shaded for each one of these images. Okay, let's look at this problem here. We are comparing six tenths and eight twelfths, and we're deciding whether it is equivalent. Now, personally, whenever I set this up, I always like to write the fraction that has the smallest denominator first, and then set it equal to the fraction that has the larger denominator. So I'm gonna write six tenths first. And I need to think I am multiplying it by a certain number and see if I'm able to come up with eight twelfths as my answer. So right away, I need to think, what do I multiply six by that will get me equal to eight? So I'll kind of rewrite it up here in case you need to see it. I'm trying to see what number goes in that blank. And I'm also trying to see what I can multiply 10 by that will get me 12. Now, if you are great at skip counting and know your multiplication facts, you will automatically see whether it, one of these numbers ends up being a factor or not. So if I skip count by six real quick, I have six, 12, 18. Notice that I already skipped over eight. When I skip count by six, there is no number that I can multiply it by that will give me an answer of eight. Now, you know, moving on to higher math, you could multiply it by a decimal, but we're not at that stage yet. So for now, we can say that it's not possible. So I'm just going to leave that question mark there because who knows what you can multiply it by, but it's definitely not gonna be a nice whole number. Now let's see if there's a certain number that we can work for our denominator here. Is it possible to multiply 10 by a number that will get me 12? Well, if I skip count by 10, I have 10, 20. I already went over 12. So there isn't a number that I can multiply it by that will get me exactly 12. So in this case, you could say that six 
tenths is not equivalent to eight twelfths. And this is a symbol you do whenever it's not equal to each other. Okay, let's look at this problem here. This time we are comparing three fifteenths and one fifth, and we're going to determine if they are equivalent. So, like I said, I like to write the fraction that has the smallest denominator first. So, in this case, I'm going to decide to write my one fifth first when I'm setting it up. And I'm leaving myself some room here so I can decide what could I multiply it by that's going to give me three fifteenths as an answer. Now, it has to be the same numerator, same denominator. So right away, one multiplied by a number will get me three. Well, I know that if I multiply one by three, that could get me three. Let's see if it's true for our problem below. Five multiplied by a number will get me 15. If I plug in three here, and I skip count real quick, 5, 10, 15, that ends up being true. So I do end up getting my power of 1 there because I have 3 over 3. I meant to write 1. My bad. So I can conclude that 1 fifth is equivalent to 3 15. Let's look at this problem here. This time we got to figure out what our denominator has to be here in order to make both of those fractions equivalent. So just like I would set up my previous problems, I need to think, what is it that I do to five that gets me an answer of 10? Now, whenever it comes to equivalent fractions, you are either multiplying or you could also be dividing in this case, notice how I'm getting larger. I know that I'm going to be multiplying. So think, 5 times a number gets me 10. Well, if I skip count by 5 real quick, 5, 10, I stop at 2. So 5 times 2 gets me 10. Now, it has to be true for the problem below as well in order to make them equivalent. So if I'm multiplying by two at the top, I gotta be multiplying by two in the bottom. So there's a number, we don't know what goes in the blank yet, that I have to multiply two by, that will give me the answer of 14. Now you can skip count by two and then see uh, what number you stop at that gets you 14, or you can kind of think backwards and decide, well, 14 divided by two gets me what? You will still end up with the same answer. So if I skip count real quick, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, I stop at the digit seven, and I can always double check to see if it's true. Seven times two, that does equal 14. So the correct answer would be five sevenths is equal to 10 fourteenths. Okay, let's look at this problem as well. Same situation. We have to make both of these fractions equivalent. So we have to see what we should fill our numerator in in order for it to be true. So let's start with our bottom here because I have two numbers that I can easily see the relationship with. So I need to think three multiplied by a number gets me 12. Skip count by threes and see what number you stop at, stop at that gets you 12. So three, six, nine, 12. Three times four gets me 12. And I can always double check if that's true. Now, if I'm multiplying by four down here, I have to do the same thing for my numerator up here. That's how we make it the power of one because we are multiplying by the same number here. So it's pretty easy. One times four gets me what? Well, any number multiplied by one is just gonna get you that same number one kind of, is kind of invisible 
if that helps. So I end up getting one third is equivalent to four twelfths.